rebuilding a large Clarkson single-cylinder vertical steam engine, and it's time to pack the gland on the steam chest to reassemble it and get it ready to go back on the engine, but something is wrong. And why does this not surprise me with this engine? The gland nut is just rotating freely in the hole. That's because it's a pretend gland nut. It's made from brass and it's just pushed into a blank hole. This is no good at all. But nothing surprises me with this engine. And it's a simple fix. I just drilled it out and re-tapped it 7 16 by 32. So now I have to make a gland nut to fit this thread. So with a nice round piece of phosphor bronze in the chuck, first of all it's a centre drill for the centre hole. You must always use a centre drill, never be tempted to go straight in with the drill, it will wander all over the place and probably break. After drilling the pilot hole with the centre drill, it's time to use a drill that is one imperial size less than a quarter of an inch in diameter, which will then allow me to use a quarter inch reamer to ream the hole to a quarter of an inch diameter. Doing it this way will give a really good surface finish and an accurate quarter inch hole. I really have speeded up this next bit. I'm turning down the outside diameter to 7 16 of an inch, and here you see me checking it with the micrometer frequently. And when I finally arrive at the 7 16 of an inch outside diameter, it's time to thread the piece. Normally I would use a tailstock die holder to cut the thread, but for threads that I don't use very much, like 7 16 by 32, I have them in these things, these are just sort of hand die holders. And that's only because I don't have enough tailstock die holders. A tailstock die holder is a better way of doing it. By using the tailstock chuck against the die holder to keep it square to the work, you will get a very satisfactory result, as you can see here. After carefully winding back the die holder to reveal the thread in all its glory, it's time to turn down the outer part to the finished diameter that you require. And this will form the main part of the main body of the gland nut. Even though this is a very simple lathe operation, you always have to think it through. Obviously, I turned the thread first, and then the outer diameter, and I'd already put the hole in the middle, which can now be reamed to finish size. It's worth mentioning at this stage, it looks nearly complete, it just needs parting off. Before I do part it off though, I'm slowing down the lathe speed and going through the centre of it with a quarter inch reamer, because the finished size of the hole for the valve spindle is quarter of an inch. Whenever you're doing lathe work, and if you're using an ordinary chuck like I'm doing here, always leave the workpiece in the chuck as long as possible. Make the piece and finally part it off. And this is what I'm just going to do. It's time now to part off the work. Never be tempted to part off the work too soon. Once I've parted this piece off, that's it. It is completely finished. Health and safety warning. Filing in a lathe is very dangerous, so take great care. Once a piece is fully parted off, I'm screwing it into the steam chest. This could be quite dangerous if I hadn't have used the file to remove the sharp edges. Don't forget, a 90 degree edge is very sharp indeed. And you could cut yourself badly. But by filing it, I've managed to survive that. In this clip, I'm scribing a couple of lines at 90 degrees to each other across the centre hole. I'm going to use these in the milling machine to show me where I need to put the adjusting slots. I'm not going to show this process because I've already shown it when I made the piston rod gland. The final thing to do is to clean up the part on some wet or dry sandpaper with a little bit of oil. Using a spot of oil helps to prevent the sandpaper from clogging so it cuts more freely. The time has come to pack the gland with some graphited yarn. But don't forget to put the actual gland nut onto the valve rod. You may ask, how much graphited yarn do you use? Well, the answer to that is I don't really know. Just wind some graphited yarn around the valve spindle and assemble it. The graphited yarn will be pushed down into the stuffing box. And if when it's all assembled, the gland nut touches the steam chest, then you haven't wound enough graphited yarn around the valve spindle. If the gland nut sticks out too far, then you've used too much graphited yarn, so take some out. In this clip, I'm screwing the valve spindle into the driving block, and with the valve in place on the driving block, and the whole assembly held up against the cylinder, you can see that now the valve uncovers the ports at each end of the valve travel. As you can see, a small amount of filing is still needed on the inside edges of the steam chest, especially at the right hand side, because it's still not letting the valve travel its full length. But at last I think we're nearly there. A bit of filing to do. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.